Hi, this is Dave Worden. Today I'd like to talk about piston valves, as we've come to know them in our horns. I have two pistons in front of me here. The one on the right is from the oldest horn I own, made in about 1895. The one on the left is the fourth valve from my own Adams, which was made about six years ago. They look a lot different in size and in finish, of course, but uh, they're actually identical in the way that they function. You can see some of the standard things that we know about. There's a valve guide here on this old horn. It's a uh, metal guide. The Adams has a plastic guide right here, which is quieter. Doesn't last as long as the metal ones, but they last a very long time, so that's not a worry for me. Underneath the piston, we see that each one has a hole in the bottom. That hole is to let air through. So when the piston moves up, up and down inside a closed cylinder, the air can travel through the piston. It escapes through a hole in the top, which is here on the atoms. And you, I think, can see it here on my tenor horn piston. Now that points out one very important feature that most people aren't aware of. These are hollow. So this outer surface here is a cylinder. Stainless steel in this case, brass in this case. The passageways inside, when I was first playing these instruments, I thought, Somebody had a, a big uh, cylinder of metal and drilled holes in it for here and here and so on. But no, that is wrong. Um, the passageways are created by tubes. So this is a, it's a hollow cylinder with holes here and here. Connecting them is a tube soldered inside. Here's my tenor horn. So if you can imagine a tube like this that has that curve is sitting inside here and going through a curve as well. So that is the essence of these piston valves. They are both hollow cylinders. They both are capped in the bottom and that's where the, the valve spring sits, pushes against that cap in the bottom. Each bottom cap has a hole in it. They are capped at the top as well. And as I've shown you, each of these top caps has a hole in it. Here we have the pad which I pushed up to show the hole. Normally it sits right on top of the piston like that and it provides quieting as the piston goes up to the top. This felt, it's actually a synthetic felt in this case, also provides the correct alignment. When this is all the way up, these ports have to align exactly with the holes in the, the cylinder walls. And the thickness of this controls that. It was the same principle here. In this case there's a cork and a felt on top of it. But it does the same thing. It quiets the travel when it bumps up against the top, and it also provides the alignment. If the thicknesses here are correct, then this hole here will align with a hole in the cylinder that surrounds it. Now and then I've heard somebody complain of whistling as the valves move up and down. That can be caused by mechanical noise, perhaps a guide that's gotten a little bit misformed and is scraping. But if it truly is a whistle sound, then it's created by air. Now in this case, you can see this top pad doesn't cover the hole, it covers part of it, but there's still plenty of room for the air to pass through. In the case of this one, it's rather hard to see, but there's the hole, very nearly totally covered, but probably still okay to pass air through. If it isn't, and it wasn't on a horn that I had before, what I did, I can't remember if this was on the Besson or on the Sterling that I played, but this top pad was a little bit wider than apparently was the manufacturer's specifications, and it covered that hole too much. So I simply took a, a sharp knife and sliced across here to flatten one side of this, this uh, disc. And I just, when I put the horn back together, just make sure that aligned with the hole and let the air pass through more freely. That's really about the only thing you would have to do normally. If you keep the, the top pads in good shape, replace them when necessary, keep these in good shape, the guides. And this is the original guide from when the horn was made about uh, five or six years ago. I can't remember when I got it. Still doing just fine. If you keep that, if you keep the bottom clean, so there's no residue around here and there's no gunk built up in here, then the valve should keep operating smoothly. If you hear a whistling sound as the piston moves up and down, then check this top vent hole and make sure there's enough room for the air to get through. If not, you can snip the side off of this this pad at the top and make a little bit more room there. So there's my introduction to piston valves. These were made over a hundred years apart 
and yet they actually function the same and are largely the same construction techniques with some refinements, of course, over the years. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for listening.